Hey, welcome back to Inside the Vandals. I'm joined now by women's basketball coach John Newley. His team coming off a big road trip picked up another couple of wins. And coach, we'll get to that in a second. But first, I got to ask you. Uh, here, it's a bit of a uh, bit of a traveling nightmare for your team. <laughs> it was. Um, we didn't arrive at UT Pan Am uh, until about one o'clock in the afternoon, which is only six hours before the game. Uh, I had to miss a shoot around. Um, had to practice the day before at my old stomping grounds at SMU because we could not get from Dallas to Edinburgh. So, yeah, the entire trip uh, kind of went kind of went wrong from a traveling standpoint. Anyway. Now, what was it like for you uh, practicing at SMU there? I mean, obviously you coached there for eight years, being back at the facility there and being around it again. It was great. You know, it was great seeing uh, people I used to work with, Rhonda and Lisa and Deneen, and uh, my old point guard, Shauna Ford, was there, who was a great player at SMU um, at, during the time I was there. And uh, great seeing all of our old banners up there, our championship banners up there, and winning the WAC in 99 was great, and our five NCAA banners were uh, it was fun, you know, I was pointing them out to the girls and saying, hey, this is possible, this is the program, you know, direction our program is going and uh, just need to keep working hard. Now, talking about the New Mexico State game first, you guys were able to pull away in that second half win by nine, but they led for much of that first half. What was happening for you guys in that first half that kind of allowed them to go into the half with a lead? I thought our shot selection to start the game early in the first half was terrible. Uh, you know, I just feel like bad decisions were going on, and it wasn't just one person. It was it was everybody. It kind of steamrolled, you know, kind of snowballed, I guess, as it went along. And um, you know, we had to talk about that at halftime and fix that up. How did you feel your team responded in that second half? Uh, I thought they responded great. You know, we were sharing the basketball, uh, making the extra pass. And I think it really picked up our defense. I think defensively we did a great job of getting out to the three-point shooters. Now, after that game, you seemed really impressed with Brooke Riley. I think you actually said that she kind of saved things for you guys in that second half. What did she do that was so key for you guys in that second half? Well, I, I do, and that's a good word, key. I think she was the key to us uh, winning in the second half. She did a great job knocking down shots, uh, taking the open shots, shooting with the ball with confidence. Uh, did a great job defensively of getting out and, and harassing three-point shooters and on the glass. She was really active, you know. She just brought a ton of energy, a ton of positive energy to the game and uh, probably maybe, I think, maybe one of the best games she's played. And, of course, New Mexico State, very good at home and they beat Seattle. Usually that's a great win for you guys. On to UTPA, the first five minutes or so of that game seemed like it was going to be a grinded out battle the whole time. It was tied at 16 and then all of a sudden you got you look back up at the scoreboard and you guys are up by 16 points. How did that happen? What changed for you guys? I thought we got out in transition and really spread the floor. I think our posts were running down hard. We're getting some easy layups. I thought we had some wide open threes uh, due to them running as hard as they were, kind of collapsing the defense. I think we took great shots and defensively we were getting it done. You know, we were uh, not allowing the three-point shot. We were rebounding, giving them one and done, and I think that really uh, uh, got the offense working. That was part of the defensive game plan for you guys, wasn't it? To keep them from running, keep them in, to make them play in the half court. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a really good team in transition. They like to get out, they'll shoot the three in transition, they'll get to the rim, and uh, we were able to get back, stop them, slow them down, and make them run that half court stuff, and I think when they had to do that, they struggled. How happy were you that your team came out off the tough travel schedule, getting in there, with six hours until you tipped <laughs> off the game and you come out and you win by 33 points. Yeah, I told them after the game, I was really proud of them, the way they handled the adversity of the bad travel, because uh, it was as bad as, about, <laughs> as it gets, I think, on this trip. So uh, to be able to do that and really press through and, and stay focused on why we're out there and not have a poor me attitude, I think they're all very positive. Hey, we're out here to, to win basketball games. and. They stayed, they stayed focused, man, and they listened, and uh, they came out and played hard. You've talked about how you guys are so good when you're sharing the ball. 22 assists against UTPA, just 14 against New Mexico State, and only five in the first half. Why is sharing the ball and getting those assists so key for you guys? Well, I mean, it means we're taking great shots. Instead of just taking good shots, which we can get a lot of times, we were taking great shots and making that extra pass. And, you know, with the kind of scores we have and shooters we have on our basketball team, if we're making the extra pass, that means we're going to get great shots. And uh, I feel pretty good if we're taking great shots. You guys have, you know, two words, road warriors, seven wins in a row on the road. You guys seem to shoot the ball so well on the road as well. What, what is it that has allowed you guys to be so successful playing on the road? Well, I think uh, the, the girls all get along, you know, they, they enjoy being around each other and the coaches and I think um, it's a real relaxed atmosphere on the road. Uh, you know, they're, they're free to just do nothing but think about basketball and playing yeah. basketball and, you know, just, just being kids, man. I think, uh, I think they enjoy the travel and the, the camaraderie of, of being around each other. 
um, you know, we certainly do, I know, as coaches, and spend that time. You know, you get to bond a little more with your team on the road because you're spending a lot of time together. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just think they go out and play relaxed, loose, and, and easy. And, um, you know, when we're doing that, we're at our best. Now, of course, coming back home here this Thursday night, last time you guys came home, you were played Grand Canyon. You came in with a 6-0 and record, and you said that you, you felt like your team was feeling some pressure. Now you guys are still unbeaten, 10-0, and and the number two team in the WAC comes in in Bakersfield. Are you going to address that with your team this week, handling kind of the expectations? Yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit. You know, we touched on it definitely uh, last time we were home, so I don't want to beat it in the ground. But we're going to yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about it, and uh, you know, know that we want to keep that same relaxed atmosphere, you know, here at home. And like you said, the pressure is on Bakersfield. That's a great perspective. And talking about Bakersfield, that that game against them in their place seemed to be very physical. It almost seemed like that was a part of their game plan coming in. Do you expect it to be the same way? Absolutely. It, it is part of their game plan. You could tell from the start. You know, they're, they're playing a lot like Seattle with the holding and grabbing and trying to get in your head and, and make you think about things other than execution, what you're supposed to be doing out on the floor um, and get involved in those mind games. And I think, you know, we just need to stay above that, uh, stay above the, the, the fray, so to speak, and, uh, and just execute and, and play our game, play Vandal basketball. What have they been doing well? They've won five in a row. The The last loss they had was from you guys. They made a couple of lineup adjustments. They uh, they took Sweat, uh, number four, and put her out at the guard now with mm -hmm. Outland. And, you know, they're their two leading scorers now are playing both playing the guard. And they moved the big kid in uh, to the post. She's about 6'3". She was player of the week last week. You know, oh, at the yeah. monster game with 26 points and 12 boards. Uh, one game and then followed up with something similar in the next game. So that, that's really helped them inside game. So now instead of just being a perimeter type team, they, they're able to go inside and muscle you up. So uh, different look for them uh, coming in here and we're going to have to adjust. Well, hopefully throngs of fans show up at the Cowan uh, this coming week to support you guys. Coach, congratulations on the 10-0 start and thanks so much for your time. All right, thanks Tom. So, Joey, you heard him coming up. It's going to be a huge game here in the Cowan Spectrum for the Vandal women playing Bakersfield, who they're 7-2. and two. They haven't lost since they played the Vandals you know, back a couple weeks ago. So this is going to be a huge game for them, one versus two in the conference, and hopefully the fans show up because this is going to be a huge game, an intense game. Bakersfield is an extremely physical team. So, you know, expect uh, some physical basketball. Hopefully the fans show up. But five of the next six for the Vandal women here at the Cowan Spectrum. And for the men, they hit the road. Yeah, it's a nice stretch at home for the Vandal women. Meanwhile, for the Vandal men, they hit the road to wrap up the season. Thanks for joining us right here on Inside the Idaho Vandals. Make sure to tune in next week. And make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. For Joey Jenkins, I'm Tom Purvis. See you next time.